so we talk about um, um, value education for um, students in college and even in school we are talking about it. So shouldn't these values be taught by the parents to their children at home um, rather than to wait till they are grown up and come to college before we inculcate this? True. <clears throat> In fact, if you look at education of the children and even of the grown-ups, basically three uh, major, you know, kind of uh, group of people are responsible. One is the parents to begin with, then the teachers in the schools and the colleges, and finally the whole society. So. It is important to give right kind of education at all three of these steps. So certainly it should be given, you know, uh, in the early childhood. In fact, uh, this zero to five is supposed to be the formative year for the child. Therefore, it should be given certainly during that period. <clears throat> and then it should be given in primary education and secondary education and higher education in everywhere. And the whole society should promote this. So it should be given through the parents, it should be given through the teachers, it should be given through the society, the right education. And well education is a part of it. So right education and sanskar has to be given everywhere. Now, the situation that we are in, we are, it seems that we are not ensuring it anywhere. Right. We are not ensuring it in the uh, family, in the formal education system, schools and colleges, and in the society at large. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wouldn't say that we are not doing it at all. We are doing it in, uh, uh, many ways, but it is not being done in a very conscious and complete manner. So what is happening today is that <clears throat> the parents think that it is the job of the formal schooling, the teachers, to give this value education. And the teachers think that it is the responsibility of the parents and both of them think that it is the responsibility of the society. But it appears that we are not doing it, you know, put together all three of them. We are not doing it. So we have to start. We have to start in a systematic manner and in a complete manner. So where do we start? So what we have found is that if you want if you parents want to be there, we will give the right kind of you know, education to the children in their child, child, early childhood. You have to work with the grown up and you find them in higher education. So that is one thing. Second is that you need teachers okay. who will teach. So we'll share these values, you know, you will be a living example of these values and, you know, share these values with the students. So there again, we have to go to higher education. And then we need people in the society who takes decision you know, in favor of uh, such a kind of um, education, you know, the right education and sanskar. So we need policymakers. They also, you know, come from these grown-ups. So we need to work, you know, at the level of higher education. So it has to be, you know, decided where do we start. And we found that it is useful to start at the level of higher education because through this, we will get the right kind of parents, you know, the right kind of teachers and the right kind of policy makers. So that was the idea to begin with uh, higher education. But of course, it has to be done in 
secondary education it has to be done in primary education and it has to be done with the you know by the parents in the very first formative years 0 to 5 before they come to the school and even when they are coming to the school and also it has to be done by the society in general you know. so every action the society is doing you know on our decisions on our you know media the kind of uh, cultural promotion that we are doing in the society they all have to support or reinforce these values so it has to be there everywhere but somewhere it has to be started and it has been started at the level of higher education because of these three reasons that we just mentioned but of course it has to be done at the level of secondary and primary education and then it has to be done at the level of 0 to 5 before the children come to the school and in fact uh, we should think that even uh, when the child is in the womb of the mother right the child is not so i mean inactive right? the self of the child is still active there so we should take care of that you know, give right kind of you know um, a conducive condition to the self and also to the body to grow in, in a proper manner right so mm. even during that period that minus 9 months to zero we have to start thinking that you know what parents are thinking what parents are eating it all matters to the help of this help self of the child and to the body of the child which is growing in the womb so to we have to take care of all that but a lot of times uh, is students in the college you know, now they are grown up they have already formed their ideas so maybe it would be better to start in the primary and focus on that rather than these older children because they are so preoccupied with their uh, uh, acquiring their skills and job and pay package then it is very hard how do we take their attention away from all that and bring it to human values do you think that they will be able to concentrate on this yeah i i will agree with it i will agree with it but the question is that where do you get this parents you know who give the right kind of education where do you get the teachers who give right kind of education to the children and value education in this case you know where do you get them it is good to start as early as possible but then you have to prepare the parents you have to prepare the teachers in the primary education you know secondary education where do you get them mm-hmm. yes. so you have to get them at this higher education level okay because they are prepared there so uh, it is good to begin with higher education but we are not saying that we have to work only with higher education we are saying that this is just the beginning it has to go to the secondary to the primary to the parents to the society yes that's true and early we start better it is in fact we should start with the parents in and go beyond that you know start with the uh, uh, with the people who are um, in the fam- you know kind of family the husband and wife who is you know planning to conceive a child and even uh, the young couple who is planning to get married even there we should start working so that they have the right kind of uh, understanding and feelings and thought and these values with them and they live up to them so that when they uh, conceive it uh, child you know they uh, are able to provide that kind of environment even to the child growing in the womb of the mother and then of course starting from 0 to 5 and so on so true as early as we start it is better but where do you begin that's the question so now that it is there in higher education and we have people who are able to kind of understand be up to live up to this and share this values with others we should certainly go for secondary education for primary education you know as parents you know provide the right kind of education to the children you know, in the very formative years of 0 to 
Yes, we should do it. But since the, I was just concerned that the, uh, in higher education, the students are more focused on getting the jobs and those uh, kind of, uh, they are preoccupied with uh, getting the skills from the education. So how do we take their mind from that and bring it to values? See, our experience has been that even in the industry today, they have started giving preference, preference to teamwork, mm -hmm. to their cooperation, you know, that they can do with other members of this um, um, company. Right? So how well they can work as a team, how well they can organize things, you know. And all this has to do with the values. It has to do with relationship. So if you look at the uh, 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 industry today or uh, the multinationals today, even they are seeking for people who can you know, relate to others, who can work as a team, you know, you can give uh, a kind of uh, a direction to the uh, work that is being done. So what our experience with IIIT has been that we started this work with IIIT in 2005. And the first batch came out in 2009. And the, uh, the response of the industry has been uh, quite warm. You know. in 2000, by 2011 and 12, Diplati Hyderabad was one of the you know, highest paid uh, kind of uh, college uh, in the country. And when these people were asked that, why do you prefer these graduates from IIIT? That's what they said, that they are good at teamwork, you know, and they cooperate with people and they create a kind of environment, conducive environment in the, um, the company. And as far as this uh, expertise is concerned, that we can get anywhere. Expertise in the technical field is concerned, we get it anywhere. But this capacity to work as a team, to cooperate, to create an environment. What is what is making a difference? So uh, that has been our observation. And even in the society, you know, I mean, people who are successful are the people who can relate to others, can work with others. So I think even in this cutthroat competition, the world of competition, uh, what is required is relationship. How well we can relate to people, how can we, how well we can relate to things around. So that is important. And more than that, I would say that, you know, living a meaningful life is certainly very important for each one of us. Certainly very important for each one of us. Right. So what we find today is that we have these graduates, you know, coming out and going to the industry and getting very high salary and good thing. But in 10 years, they find no motivation, you know, to work. Right. They, have, they don't seem to have any, you know, kind of purpose in their life. They have accumulated enough money. Right. And of course, they don't know what is that enough, but you know, if you look at it in real sense, there's, they have accumulated a lot of money and they find that, yes, the money is no more giving them um, motivation, giving them happiness. And they don't know what to do. So what more they can do, they do not know. Money is there, but they don't get that happiness out of it, that motivation from it. So they almost seem to be purposeless. So this education is not just meant for serving, you know, uh, what is going on in this society, right or wrong. But education is meant for giving the right direction to the children, to the students, to the teachers, and ultimately to the whole society. So I think we have to look at education in a 
<coughs> holistic manner. So number one, I would say, even for the industry, these values are important. Relationship is important. Teamwork and cooperation is important. And therefore, we should give them the kind of education for relationship, for teamwork, and so on. And secondly, we, we are not just you know, uh, resources to serve the industry. We are human beings with certain purpose, with certain you know, uh, <clears throat> inbuilt uh, purpose within. So we have to understand that and we have to live up to that. Only then we'll be you know, fulfilled within. And when we are fulfilled within, we can do meaningful things in this society. So both way, you know, uh, that giving the right direction to the students during the process of education is the responsibility of the education system. Because it is not just supposed to serve what is, you know, demanded by the society, but it is also supposed to give direction to the society. So both way, even to serve what is required today, we need this education on relationship, on harmony, on coexistence, and for giving a purpose or you know, understanding the purpose and fulfilling the purpose of life of a human being, we need to give this education. And, and yes, our experience, as I was sharing yesterday, our experience has been that when you start with this, you know, they find it something very foreign to them you know, and many times even unnecessary for them. But once they are exposed to it, and once they start working with their, themselves, start this process of self-exploration, things change. They are able to appreciate you know, that, yes, it is making sense to their life. You know, they can live a better life as a student with their colleagues, you know, with their parents, with their teachers. You know, their life has improved. So that they can see immediately. And once that they see this, you know, they start working seriously on it. Yes. yes. So I can see that, you know, to start with, we can probably talk to them about this, what you mentioned with the triple IT experience and uh, these examples that would be good. And then eventually they can um, sort of move on to actually exploring. Yeah. yeah. In fact, the whole environment of triple IT changed. And this is the experience of many of the colleges who are sincerely taking it. You know, we have this AKG college in um, Ghaziabad, where the teachers, the staff, the administration, the students, all of them have gone through this process. And it is making a lot of difference, a lot of difference in terms of their studies, in terms of their relationship, in terms of their projects. One concern uh, with this is that uh, you know, we are uh, going to uh, bring them to see these values through the workshops, but can they really be taught like this? I mean, uh, values, uh, they say that values are only caught, they can't be taught. So, uh, this uh, has been this, you know, uh, somehow it is the belief that the values cannot be taught can of course be caught. That is, you are living by values and the children, the students will observe you living with those values and they will catch those values. That's how things go, which is true. It's true. For example, when you learn a language, the child is not learning language in the formal schooling. Right? The parents are speaking the language and the child is learning it. You know? They simply catch this language and a very natural process. So this is true that if the parents, the teachers, the society, you know, people in the society are living by these values, you know, the child will very naturally, you know, pick it up. But what we are, have, uh, you know, uh, found that if we look at the whole process of education, which I was mentioning, one of these days, you know, this process of this child is starting with imitation. 
then following what the elders are doing right then the child expects that the you know the pair, the elders should tell him what to do what not to do and then at one stage it is expecting that you give them the basic rules right and then they will try to work out things on their own and at one stage they will also try to verify investigate explore and find out for themselves right and when they investigate and explore and find out for themselves something as right then they get self discipline that self discipline is where we want to reach right so we have to provide this facility to the children that when they have come to this stage of you know trying to explore things within investigate right and their by understand then we should be able to provide them the right kind of you know uh, environment and also provide them the right kind of proposals and when we are providing them the proposals which they are trying to verify right and in the process we facilitate them in terms of responding to any question they have and any clarification right that is required so at that point it has to be taught it has to be taught and it can be taught right in fact what we are trying to do is we are trying to draw their attention towards these values which are intrinsic to them it is there already within them they have natural acceptance for these values so we are not creating these values they already have this natural acceptance for these values we are only drawing their attention towards it through these proposals we are asking them to look into their own natural acceptance we are asking them to verify it you know experientially in terms of their behavior leading to mutual happiness in terms of their work with rest of nature leading to mutual prosperity which they can do themselves and when we do when they do it themselves they have this confidence you know that assurance that yes i have seen it myself you know i have experienced it i have realized it you know and then it becomes a part of his being so it has to be taught anyway right even in the informal process that we are going through we begin with catching the values you know which elders are living with but at one point we start questioning and when we start questioning right that has to be responded properly it has to be responded properly, properly. and the way to respond properly is what we are you know proposing as the process of well education that is the self exploration so that self exploration whereby right kind of proposals are provided to them either in term in the classes or in the society in the family and when they are trying to verify that on the basis of their own natural acceptance right they should be supported they should be facilitated in terms of responding to any question that they you know have or any clarification that they require so that has to be done in the classroom in the college school and it has to be done in the family and in the society so i would say that values can be caught and values can be taught and both should be done both should be done right the parents the teachers the elders in the society have to be the living example of these values so that the children can catch these values but when they are trying to go through this process of self verification self exploration they should be facilitated that's actually a very good point that even if the values are caught 
स्टूडेंट्स मे नॉट रियली नो वाई दे आर डूइंग सो इफ दे एक्सप्लोर एंड वेरीफाई देन दे विल बी एबल टू सी दैट ट्रू ट्रू इनफैक्ट मेनी ऑफ द सोसाइटीज व्हिच डू नॉट प्रोवाइड दिस फैसिलिटी यू नो दे कन्वर्ट दिस वैल्यूज इनटू रिचुअल्स दे बिकम रिचुअल्स एंड आफ्टर सम टाइम दे बिकम डेड रिचुअल्स बिकॉज़ that process of self verification is not taking place so you take them by belief and then it becomes a kind of a dead society and it is not able to face any uh, input from outside so it is it has to be a part of the uh, uh, process in the society whether in the informal education or in the formal education it has to be a part of it that every time every child who is growing with these values should be able to verify for themselves and reinforce yes true um, but when we teach there is one concern that uh, you know in so many subjects we teach and this is just one more subject and it's a uh, one course and so after it is taught then they forget about it and they go about life you know in their normal way so how do we make it a part of them that it stays with them that it's not just lost after the subject is taught see this i mean i would say that uh, that will depend upon the relevance if this what is being taught in this course is relevant for them and if they can see the relevance right <clears throat> they will be with it right as simple as that to begin with yes we have to make help them to see you know to begin with because uh, as um, you mentioned you know that there is a belief that you know it is not something not to be taught but to be caught and therefore why bring in this as a part of the formal curriculum so that kind of resistance may be there to begin with but once they are able to you know go through it and verify for themselves <clears throat> they find the relevance of it and when they find the relevance of it right they uh, they keep it with themselves and work with it in fact uh, i remember that when we started introduce this in up technical university the colleges were not willing to send even two teachers for the orientation and now there are many colleges in the uh, in under you ticket you <coughs> who uh, are working for 100% of their teachers to go through this right? and many of them have almost 90% 95% of their teachers who have gone through this process not only the foundation course but higher level courses so uh, they see the relevance see the importance you know and they are willing to um, um, let their teachers go through this process you know, not only teachers in fact i was mentioning with akg and there are many such colleges now who uh, are wanting this you know that 100% teacher should go through it not only the teachers the staff the management you know the students and even the parents of the students btu for example this bikaner technical university one of the days uh, the vice chancellor we will request him to share um, his uh, distinct uh, <clears throat> experience with the uh, this work in two years they have uh, uh, made their teachers to go through this process then the management uh, then the students and then now they are working with the parents of the students because when this was online workshop going on for the students many of the parents uh, uh, went through it and they found it very interesting and they requested that it should be done for them as well so they are doing it for the parents so that will come naturally you know if they find that it is relevant it is making sense to them to their life 
you know, to their relatives, you know, uh, then yes, they will keep it with them. Not only keep it with them, but uh, uh, you know, take it seriously, work with it, and also make it available to others. And that is what is happening. That is what is happening. Yesterday only this uh, Dr. Geeta was saying that when I came across it, I think that this is the best thing to do. And why not devote full time to it? Yes. Yeah, that's a very natural response. Mm. But but they should be able to find the sense it you know relevance of it. True. But um, I think um, not just teaching in society uh, and teaching in colleges, but even to be able to have it in society would be more helpful for the students because we teach something, then they go out in society and it is the same thing as before. So then won't there be misfits in society? They might have concerns about that also. True. That's very true. But the only question is, where do we start? Right. In fact, I, I would share another experience. You know, uh, Dasha Thinle uh, is here with us. You know, 2012, when it, uh, we started, uh, that was the first time we met uh, Dasha Thinle. And at uh, that time, he was the vice chancellor of the only university in Bhutan, the Royal University of Bhutan. And uh, he found it meaningful, so he sent some of his teachers, uh, particularly the warden and the dean, who uh, came uh, for a workshop and then they found it interesting and all that. And then finally they decided to start it in their colleges. You know, at that time they had 10 colleges, government colleges, one private college, so total 11 colleges. And it was started there. and. When it was started there, the uh, Anti-Corruption Commission of Bhutan, the then uh, chairman, uh, Dasho Nitin, <coughs> she happened to uh, uh, come across this uh, through Dasho Thinle, and she found it interesting. And then they organized a three-day workshop in uh, Anti-Corruption Commission holding you know, I mean, everybody attending that from chairman to the uh, peon. And they found it work and, you know, and that, you know, one of the response was that if this goes to everyone in Bhutan, then we'll have to close down this anti-corruption commission. So that was uh, their response and they took it seriously. So, then it went to the civil servants and all you know kind of people. So it certainly went to the whole society. People they found it meaningful in higher education, in primary education, in um, their administration, in this anti-corruption. Yes, it has to go everywhere, but somewhere you have to begin. Somewhere you have to begin, and the best place to begin with is this, you know, formal education, and that to higher education because it provides you all these three kind of people, you know, the parents who have the values, the teachers who can teach these values, and the policy makers who can take decision in favor of it. So that is our experience, but certainly, you know, it has to go to the whole society, everywhere, everywhere it has to go. Yeah, in fact, interestingly, this triplity experiment, one of the things that we found was that a significant divisible change in the culture of triplity took place when the housekeeping staffs were introduced to it. So one would not think that their behavior makes so much of difference. But uh, the uh, culture of this uh, institute 
was visibly you know changed when this house keeping staff were uh, exposed to this so certainly we should start it in the society as a whole but then somewhere we have to begin which we course should the course be taught through practical exercises or short stories or case studies of great people in place of this classroom teaching was they just mug it up uh, for the examination and reproduce it in the examination and in fact uh, so marking is so lenient um, so this kind of thing may not be so effective it won't bring any transformation it's see what i mentioned just now about this process of learning and understanding in the child as long as they are going by imitation by following you know by discipline and so on then all this is helpful you know working through practical exercises through short stories through case studies and so on but when the child is trying to explore within verify things for himself or herself then what we have to do is to give them the basic principles right basic principles about life about existence and help them to verify themselves right so because this course is being planned for uh, the you know uh, higher education where the children has have already grown up to that age you know beyond 10 12 years of age where they want to verify things for themselves therefore what we need to do is to give them the basic principles which they can verify for themselves through their own natural acceptance and through their own experiential validation you know, that we will just talk about you know, in detail about what is this self exploration or the process of self exploration so if we if they can do it then they will have the assurance of it understanding of it and out of that understanding they will have the confidence and with that confidence they can work through you know their own life through the life of their family and the whole society so that you have to do at point at one point of time so if you look at the uh, way this is planned here we are basically trying to work with those basic underlying principles of life and the human existence which every child can verify for himself then we are also certainly giving some practices in fact there are 28 lectures and 14 practice sessions where they can work with those basic principles which they have understood you know in terms of their behavior in terms of their work right so that practice sessions are there and of course you know we keep giving you know live examples and this uh, you know incidences which keep taking place in our day to day life uh, we certainly do that uh, so our focus is to work with those basic principles and you know help the students to look into them and verify for them and you know be confident about them then they will work out the details about the practices and when they try to live with it in their real life they will have their own stories in fact now we have thousands of stories you know <clears throat> about what has happened with the teachers who have gone through it what is happening with the students who are going through it so a lot of these experiences are there and very valuable experiences and each one of them can be taken as a case study or taken as a short stories you know, which are in a way real life stories but certainly we should do that we should do that as we go on and we have the higher courses and we have more kind of time to uh, uh, work with it we should introduce this short stories this case studies 
and they can be derived from the experience that we had for last 15 years with this uh, exercise in fact uh, uh, we are trying to document uh, the experiences of the teachers who have been going through it for last 10 years 15 years you know the experiences of the students the parents the management the staff and it will be useful it will be worth so as long as we are going uh, through this process of imitation and following you know what is uh, done by the elders these are important these case studies are important these sort of studies are important the practices are important and we should have all of them particularly when we are planning for the secondary education and primary education we must build up but when it comes to uh, uh, this stage when the child is trying to explore within you know verify himself then yes this way of uh, you know going through the process of self exploration where we are giving them the basic principles you know of life and helping them to verify it uh, themselves and this kind of uh, classroom teaching is going to be very useful and going to be very necessary and whether you do it in the classroom or do it outside the classroom but this fact that these basic proposals are made available to them for their self verification and we facilitate them to go through this process and help them in the process in terms of responding to their questions and you know making necessary clarifications i think that's very important it is very important and in fact the real transformation in life will take place only when we do this only when we help them to you know explore within and find out for themselves you know with their real life experience that there will be transformation in their life this imitation this following you know they are helpful but that does not give that kind of assurance to the child you know they don't become the owner of this they only become the follower of it so i think that is very necessary very necessary it should be discussed you know through and through either in the classroom or out of the classroom in the society you know in our day to day discussion you know there should be a provision there should be a provision in fact any society a developed society had this provision for dialogue at provision for this dialogue where all these things can be proposed explored questioned responded on that uh, one concern about uh, uh, putting it in this uh, teaching it in the colleges is that many students are already not interested in the courses that they are doing many of them have been forced by their parents to come into this now we are just adding one more course uh, to them when they are already not interested so um, there is some concern whether they will be able to cope with this and whether they are uh, mature enough to sit through all this and grasp all these values um especially to verify for themselves that is also one concern see uh, this issue that students are not taking interest in studies uh, is a general issue and if you look at it i mean i know even for iits you know it council really <laughs> it is of course one of the best institution in india the students are not taking interest in studies they think that we have done enough you know made enough effort for coming to iit now why should you know we spend time studying any more because uh, anyway there is a relative grading so if we don't study at all or all of us you know take this decision then it will not matter 
so this is happening you know and this is general problem and if you look at this problem it is because they think that what they are studying has no relevance no direct relevance to their life what is important is to get a degree from one of the iits and if they have the degree they will get a good job and they will get a good salary you know good physical facility and that's it so they are putting lot of labor effort to come to iit but after they have come to iit they think that there is no point putting effort so what they are teaching is not are very relevant for their life you know when they have come to iit what was relevant was to get a good job which they will get anyway so they are not taking interest because they are not finding it relevant when it comes to this you know value education if it becomes relevant for them if they find that it is relevant for their life they will take interest if they don't see that it is relevant for them right, then they will not take interest so this is what is going to happen right. our observation is that if the teacher is able to grasp this explore within understand this you know live with it and find it meaningful then they are able to generate that kind of interest in the students right they are able to generate this interest and they are able to help the students to explore to investigate to see for themselves you know and see the outcome of this in their life once that happens they start taking interest in fact they take it start taking interest in this particular uh, course and then they also start taking interest in other courses because then in the light of this they can see the relevance of learning other things so they become more sincere to their academics in fact our experience has been where that wherever this has started and has been taken you know properly in those colleges the academic sincerity of the teachers and the students both has increased has increased in many places very significantly so today we think that the you know education is or whatever they are taught is not relevant and therefore we are not taking interest if we find that even one subject is relevant for you know us and we start taking interest then we also start paying attention to other subjects so invariably the responses of the students in the classroom you know has uh, increased their sincerity their you know to academics has increased you know more number of students are thinking in terms of going for higher studies so all these are happening you know a lot of those survey has been done data is are available to show that uh, not only that they have started taking interest in this uh, particular subject but uh, in the light of this they are able to see the relevance of other subjects also and therefore they have become more serious about their academics so that is what we feel would happen in any college uh, who takes it seriously and particularly the teachers who take it seriously and and there is a significantly warm response um, in the students for the teachers who are sincerely working on it very warm response at least quite visible in aktu they have to be very properly prepared yes i can see that uh, when students are if they see their own teacher improving or changing then it can be very inspiring for students yes yes sometimes uh, there is uh, you know this feeling that there is a lot of generation gap 
between teachers and students like they are almost like uh, not able to relate to the teachers in that case uh, are there any more creative ways that we can bridge this gap see uh, what we are working on in the name of well education is something which is equally you know uh, applicable equally useful to everyone whether it is a teacher whether it is a student whether it is an old person young person or a child this is something which relates to everyone so if the teacher is exploring within and understanding these basic principles of life you know basic principles of existence and then he is living up to it it will be fulfilling for him and it will be fulfilling for all those who come in contact with him the students for example and the students will feel connected with the teacher so this gap generation gap is there because we do not have something which equally relates to everyone with this values that we are talking about is relevant for everyone for the teacher for the students for the our parents you know everyone so when the teachers start working on it and they share this with the students the students feel very connected very connected with the teachers so much so that their behavior with these teachers become quite different from their behavior with other teachers very visible in many of the colleges in many of the colleges this has been noted and other teachers you know, keep asking that what have you done with these students they don't even wish to us and they are touching your feet now that kind of relationship is established i uh, know that many of the colleges what they are now doing is that if there is any problem you know uh, regarding discipline they will call these teachers and ask them to you know kind of talk to these students you know and handle handle the situation because they think that the students are willing to listen to these people not willing to listen to the administration so that kind of uh, trust um, is being generated because you know there we are talking about something which is equally meaningful equally relevant for all of us so if we start working on it in fact that generation gap you know will not be there because we are all human being and these human values are same for all of us and if i have the human values my behavior with the others change my behavior with the students change and that makes them more comfortable so they are able to share their own problems they this uh, you know they see this possibility that they can share their problems and get the right kind of uh, guidance from you so uh, they come close and they want to share and they want to you know work with you so that generation gap can be overcome in fact uh, it's one of the very effective way of overcoming this generation gap in fact we are creating this generation gap because we are talking about things you know where um, which are not relevant to all of us so it may be relevant for me it is not relevant for the students and if i am talking about this then the students will feel the gap but the experience of this course has been that it establishes a very uh, healthy relationship between the teacher and the student and you know the students are willing to take the guidance from such teachers but of course this is you know important that the teacher himself 
should be able to explore understand and be with these values in terms of his behavior in terms of his work then you know it creates a trust in the students and they are they come close and they are willing to share you yes, i can see how uh, teachers being role models would be really good for the students um, that would be very nice um but aside from that uh, there is some um, you know there are so many courses for them to focus on and uh, because the focus is so much on marks and um, getting the right job so in terms of workload uh, they have probably a lot of uh, professional workload so um whether they will have time for uh, this additional course and uh, you know on the one hand we are talking about uh, getting admission into or placement into um, corporates uh, where the focus is a uh, lot of times on the marks and on the other hand we are seeing give importance to human values so it might be a little bit difficult for students See, I just uh, mentioned that uh, to begin with, we feel that there is a contradiction between the academics, you know, of the courses on skills uh, and these courses on values. Okay. But when we start working on it, we find that there is no contradiction. In fact, if we have the right kind of, you know, understanding of the values and we live with those values. then this academics will find a proper place you know the academics in the sense of you know his skills you know education on his skills will find a proper place you know become more will become more relevant and therefore the students will start paying better you know more attention even to these courses which are related to skills see the problem today is that we do not understand life we do not understand the basic principles of life and therefore we don't understand how to live with it you know in a mutually fulfilling manner right whether it is with the human being or it is with the rest of nature now when we don't understand them and we are not sure of them then we are not comfortable with it and we are not comfortable with things around with you know which we are working whether it is a human being or the rest of nature so there is a, you know kind of very basic kind of uh, dissatisfaction towards oneself and towards the other and with that dissatisfaction you are not taking interest in anything you know you only feel forced to do it and whenever you are doing it you are doing it under that compulsion you know that force so we have lost the meaning in life okay that is the problem and we are not given this basic principles of life you know which we can understand live with it and see that it leads to my own fulfillment and fulfillment of uh, things around therefore i am not finding interest you know in this whole thing in the whole exercise around, that is going on around us in fact uh, if you look at uh, the kind of mentality that is generated even in education today is that the purpose of education is to get a good job a good salary lot of physical facility and when you get lot of physical facility you can consume them and get happiness out of it so the process is not at all you know important this end result of consuming more and more physical facility and through the sensation get more and more happiness so that is the interest of the parents that is the interest of the children so they feel that this whole process of education is more like a burden for them so they are not taking interest 
they are not taking interest they are not taking interest even in this educations which are related to skills so this is the condition today what we are saying is that if they can be exposed to these basic principles of human existence basic principles of human life if they can understand this through their own self exploration and if they can work on it you know, practice it then they will see the purpose in their life they will feel that satisfaction in their life they can see the satisfaction you know in their interaction with other human being in their interaction with rest of the nature if that happens then this fulfillment will help them to relate to things around in a better manner so they will be more interested in their behavior with other human being they will be more interested in their work with rest of nature so they will be more interested in their skills development you know and the courses related to it and the practice related to it so i think if we work with this uh, basic principles of human existence then it will uh, uh, you know make this education process relevant and therefore both the you know education on values and education on skills both of them will become relevant for them and their in you know kind of sincerity towards academics will increase and this has been our observation also that i just mentioned regarding the number of courses my feeling is that the issue is that of interest if there is interest you know they can take one more course or two more courses because anyway you know if you look at the uh, time table of the students even of the teachers four to five hours they are spending every day without knowing what they are doing at that time so if you look at your own time table you will realize this that we are spending four hours five hours just gossiping just talking about things going here and there purposelessly so if there is a relevance there is a purpose they can spend time that is one thing that is you know uh, there second is that we are teaching many courses which are not directly relevant even to skills and even to people so we should really look into them and uh, make uh, enrich them there are many courses now for example economics in sociology in psychology you know many of these courses are being offered even in the science and technology many courses have been there for years you know and uh, uh, we are not really uh, updating them so there is lot of scope in fact aict last year in 2018 last before year before uh, they have uh, reduce the credit from 240 to 2/3 almost uh, one third 33% has been reduced there is now more scope where we can put in such you know relevant courses so i think that's not an issue really we are offering so many courses which are not as relevant to their life and even to skills so we can take care of this kind of thing you know update them modify them and in the beginning you have to teach this course as separate course in on value education but as we have been saying we have to begin with value education then we have to shift to this value based education and ultimately the value based living so if we can do that yes things will become much simpler because most of these courses related to skills can be you know uh, on job um, kind of education and they will be more relevant but then you have to have the willingness of the children, you know students to work with their hands right? work on job and take the necessary uh, kind of training and education in the process once that feeling is that commitment is there they will be able to learn the skills much better so there's not a problem you know adding a course one or two course or in fact now um, aict has prescribed that we should have 
20 percent of the courses you know relating to humanities social science human values because they can see the importance of it so even out of that 160 credits over the four years now they are saying that 20 percent of it should be related to humanities to social science to human values because they can see the relevance now uh, every walk of life if we put ourselves into this kind of analysis self exploration and the micro level analysis of each and every aspect is it not a over stress on individual to reach to the goals that is my question which has come after a third day of discussion every walk of life everything we are analyzing it, it, is it not over stress on the mind some say that we should take the life as it comes we should take it forward we should identify our priorities and put it in right direction but every step if we are analyzing like this is it true that is my question professor yeah what we are saying is that we should take life as it comes yes clarity and confidence yes this is important to have the clarity about life yes. and to have the clarity the confidence in the self yes if we don't have the clarity about life about the human life about the whole existence then every time we are facing some situation we are lost into it yes. similarly if we do not have this confidence in oneself we get swept away by the environment yes so it is true that we should take the life as it comes but at the base of it we have to have the clarity and the confidence yes. now what we are saying is that this clarity and this confidence will come when i investigate myself i investigate this whole nature this whole existence and on the basis of this i am able to understand my relationship with each and every unit in this existence in this nature yes. and i have the clarity how to live with them in a mutually fulfilling manner and once i have this clarity then i will have the confidence in myself that yes i know things around i know how i am related to them and i know how to live with them in a mutually fulfilling manner so what we are saying is that this clarity and this confidence is required to take things as they come as they come in a mutually fulfilling manner so i will be able to take them as they come in a mutually fulfilling manner only when i have the clarity and i have the confidence and what we are saying is that to have that clarity and to have that confidence we have to do this self exploration this investigation into our own existence as a human being into the whole existence the whole nature around us which includes both human being and the rest of nature so i need to understand you know explore each one of these things and understand them only then i will have the clarity and the confidence to take things as they come otherwise i will every time you know be confused within myself and i will get lost under the pressure of the environment yes, professor one more point is it is not overnight or one or two days or one year two years it's a lifetime exploration that's what i feel throughout our life we should have this kind of analysis to lead and put the life in right direction exactly in fact as i mentioned yes. you know just that we are starting with this grown up these adults hoping that they will become the parents the policy makers right when they become this they are able to promote this lifetime process of exploration in the family in the educational institution in the society in general but true what you are saying is very true that this is a lifetime ongoing process of 
self exploration self investigation yes true but then we have to prepare people for you know this next generation yeah and that is what we are trying to do i mean for example you know people like you uh, and this dr geeta was sharing yesterday yeah. uh, have been uh, you know looking for such things you know and when you get it you feel so uh, you know comfortable with it and uh, you know you are so willing to work on it and also share with others so we already have such people who uh, if it is given to them they will find it meaningful they will take it to themselves they will work with it and they will you know uh, share it with others so in a very natural process it will multiply yes yes it's true that it is a process of self transformation yes yes so if the students go through it if the teachers go through it they transform themselves if the students go through it they will be able to transform themselves yes. so definitely that is the purpose of education yes child should get transformed to a you know new um, a human being you know what we are calling as human being living with in human consciousness yes so that transformation is what is desirable yes. and through this it is possible to do that so sir this is a very nice uh, 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 initiative by this uh, 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 university aict so sir it is a very nice matlab ye ek aisa is type ka topic hai ki jo hum sikha nahi sakte matlab unexplainable hai but even though ye effort kiya gaya aur ye matlab isme deeply aap sabko सर uh, हर लेवल पे समझाने की जो कोशिश की जा रही है सर इट इज वेरी नाइस वेर सच इट इज मतलब इम्पॉसिबल थिंग को पॉसिबल करने के लिए जो एक एफर्ट किया जा रहा है सर इट इज वेरी मतलब आई एम वेरी मच थैंकफुल टू यू सर थैंक्स सर एंड आई एम लर्निंग ए लॉट सर आई हैव इम्प्रूव सो मच एंड आई एम लर्निंग सो मच एंड आई वॉन्ट टू लर्न टिल द लास्ट uh breath of my life sir thanks a lot sir bahut acha hai dipti ji aapka swagat hai uh, see what we are trying to do is uh, you know uh, trying to bring in the main stream education what you know thousands of years of uh, you know search of our ancestors have been ji sir so right from the time when human being is there human being has been searching for this human yes. value See, what uh, uh, we are saying is that uh, it has been the part of education in uh, most of the traditions yes but uh, if you look at this modern education today this is not there you know but there is a need for it yes yes sir so what we are doing is that something which was so much there in the uh, you know many of the traditions and which have been pursued by all such great people you know we are trying to understand them we are trying to articulate them and we are trying to place them in this formal mainstream education initially as yes, it was sounding little difficult but now we are finding that it is the need of the time and therefore people are you know well taking it and it is multiplying you know very fast i mean these three responses yesterday uh, uh, there was a response and today response from dr prakash and yourself is uh, an indication that you know uh, certainly people are taking it very well uh, initially all these questions which we were asking today you know were there uh, but now Uh, slowly people are able to see the uh, meaningfulness of this and are able to uh, you know work on it and also think in terms of multiplying it so yes. it is good you know uh, it is the very kind of team work and every one of us is uh, going to contribute to that team work now this team includes all of you who I have gone through it and were working on it and were finding it meaningful you know and thinking in terms of multiplying it so it is a collective work and uh, 
it is uh, you know uh, on the basis of what uh, our ancestors have worked for thousands of years uh, to uh, i keep saying that the basic principle of truth love and compassion is what they have uh, worked out and uh, we are taking the clue from there and trying to you know place it in this formal education through a process of self exploration uh so that every child can go through it you know work on it and find it meaningful be with you know it in their life and multiply it in the society so in the beginning it my was it was you know kind of appearing to be little difficult but now we are finding that it is multiplying in a very natural manner much faster than we had expected so good this has been the collective effort of the whole tradition and it is the collective effort of all of us won't the, the whole exercise would yes. reduce if you say the values are innate it's already there our job is only to um, i mean show it to the students yes so the exercise will become a a undoing of a simple undoing of preconditioning want it be see the emphasis is on making these intrinsic values clear to the students in the process yes what you are saying is correct that the preconditionings you know will be purified i would say rather than removed purified if they are right kind of preconditioning it, they will be affirmed if they are wrong kind of preconditionings they will be removed but our emphasis is not on you know working with the preconditioning our emphasis is working with you know helping the students see what is intrinsic to them when they are able to see what is intrinsic to them then they will do their own you know self evaluation and evaluation of their preconditioning you know that they have accumulated without being aware of it so what we are saying let us be aware and let us ask ourselves what is intrinsic to us what is natural to us what is naturally acceptable to us you know and the proposal that we are giving are regarding this you know intrinsic values that is there as an integral part of the human being so through proposals we are reminding them of this basic intrinsic values which they already have within themselves and when we remind them of this and when they look within and ask you know whether this is naturally acceptable to them or not they are able to see that yes this is you know naturally acceptable to them and therefore it is an intrinsic thing to them once they are able to see this and that's our emphasis in fact so once they are able to see an outcome of this is that they are able to look at their preconditioning and evaluate those preconditions and purify them so if they are right kind of preconditioning they will be reinforced if it's wrong kind of preconditioning it will be removed so that kind of purification will take place